The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Welcome to the show from the offices of Duke & Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where the snow is up to your eyeballs today, folks. Anyway, it's going to melt pretty quickly, I think, but we'll see. Let's take a look here at the German DAX. As you can see, we've been in a downtrend. We're completing an ABCD pattern. Uh, which is, you know, long-term, usually pretty bearish. If we take a look at what's happening with the, uh, hold on one second here, with the German, uh, the, US, the UK market, you'll see we're seeing the exact same pattern uh, in that one also. Uh, so these are ones that, uh, you know, they're not related to what we do here, but it's overall economy and their overall pattern. So these are bearish patterns. Whether they'll continue or not, we don't know. Let's uh, move over to the gold market, folks, because uh, there was something really important happening uh, over the weekend. I did a lot of work uh, in the gold market. And as you know, we were looking for that price of gold to come down to that uh, 1292 level, which it did on Friday. Uh, right near the close, uh, we opened up about $6 last night, and uh, I had sent out a couple of emails in the video saying, you know, be really careful here because this looks really bearish long term, and I suggested you put your stop at the break-even point, which has been 1292, 1293, and we're below that now. We'll be able to find out what's uh, what's going on. So anyway, we'll keep a look at, we'll keep a watching on some of these things here as we go through the show today, we will have Bill Meridian as our guest at the break, which is always a lot of fun. He's got some great information for us. And uh, one of the things that, well, there's several things that uh, uh, make, make me believe that we're looking at uh, something that could be really sinister in gold. And one of them we got from our friend uh, Bill uh, when he was on last month, and that was this long-term cycle uh, in the gold. And you'll notice here that that should have been topping in January. Well, it might have topped uh, you know, four or five weeks later, because this is a very long-term chart going back several years, and we had a pattern there. And the reason why the bearishness, folks, I, I will basically, uh, you know, here's here's the the main thing right here. Just if you'll take a look here, at the, uh, uh, take a look here at one sec. Oh, just a second here. Dog oh, got it. Okay, bear with me here. Hold on a second. I have to tell someone. <sighs> Okay, here we go. Just one second here. Let's move on here and uh, let's get this up here so we can see this long-term weekly chart. And I'll go through this whole thing so you can see it. Uh, we'll be able to see. There we go. Okay. As you can see, after we made that 78% level, we went a little bit above it. We went about $6 above it in the gold. And the reason for that was, of course, that buyout between Newmont and Barrick. And now I guess that's being challenged. But this is the long-term chart in gold going back over the last eight years. You'll see we've been in a really tight consolidation between 2016 and where we are right now. We've had the big move. <laughs> we've had the big move down. And uh, hold on one second. We had the big move down Friday, which was a really tip-off, folks. That was not a that was not a good pattern to see. You would rather see it come down relatively slowly. And we came down so fast. That was the main thing that that made me uh, a little bit worried about it. And also. If we take a look at the XAU, which is, uh, you know, very, you know, very highly traded, and uh, you'll, you'll notice here on the XAU, this is the, uh, this is the daily chart. You went up to the exact 61% retracement about eight days ago, and look what's happened. I mean, you're you're taking out last week's lows or two weeks ago's lows without any trouble at all. That's not a bullish sign, and that's a beautiful ABCD pattern right there at the top. So that was another reason that, you know, made me say, whoa, this gold is not what we think it is. If we take a look at the uh, bull bear index, it was even more apparent. Now, I don't trade this one, but people look about it. We'll take a look at this thing here. 
You'll see there we are with the, the bull bear index. What did we do? We went right to the exact 61% retracement of the January high. You can see what gold did. It went substantially, almost, you know, making a double top up there. But the the bull bear index did not, you know, uh, ver verify that that's what was happening. And you can see the beautiful ABCD since November. That was spot on also. So those were several. There's a few other things that, that made me uh, a little bit skeptical. And, and I also did, you know, some of the other uh, metals that we don't usually do. And I'll bring up palladium because we did talk about that last week. And palladium is not a good thing to trade, folks, unless you have orders setting in there. For guys sakes, don't go in at the market because the spread on the palladium is, uh, you know, they don't call it a spread for no reason. <laughs> so don't don't go in. You, you know, use a uh, use a limit order if you're going to uh, do palladium because it is uh, literally uh, uh, pretty wild in there. They'll have 20 and 30 point spreads, which is which is a great deal. And we don't want to get involved when those big spreads like that. You want to keep your you keep your uh, losses and your control of your risk as as close as possible as you possibly can. If we take a look here at the long term picture in platinum, you'll see that also that we've had a pretty good rally in platinum. Ran into some resistance up there at 880, and uh, whether that's going to mean much or not, we'll know here in the next day or two. My game plan in the gold, folks, is I want to see what happens over these this week. This is going to be a key week because you know maybe it went down below that uh, the 1192 level because there were so many people watching that level but the other thing is that uh, the harmonic number in gold is 34 34 times 2 68 if you divide that by or subtract that from the high at 91 that gives you a price of 1283 so 1283 should be really strong support uh, in the gold at that point now it won't be a it won't be a really clear ratio at that point but it's going to be really interesting to watch it but the key from my perspective, is to watch this next few days here, the ABCD move, and we'll watch from that level. But, boy, I tell you, with that big wide range down on that weekly chart, on all of them, I mean, every single one of these things has had a really bad, uh, you know, not a very good, you know, start for, you know, something to buy. That's my guess. Let's take a look here at the copper, too, because Dr. Copper sometimes is in here. And you'll be able to see here, copper, we got up to that uh, 1298 level. And again, we had another move down. We're trading at 1290 today. So all that is moving down uh, a little bit. So little by little, we'll, we'll have more information on the gold this week. But right now, I can't, I can't be a buyer in here because of that wide range down uh, on Friday. And the fact that we went below it, I mean, the fact that we stopped right at 1292 was good. We got up to 1298 last night. And that's when uh, I, you know, I was, I was really worried about it gapping down because I, I didn't put the official buy order in, but I put that order, I put those charts out so often that a lot of people uh, assumed that that was a buy, which it should have been, but uh, I didn't officially put it in. So I just want to let you know that not to uh, let that thing go to a, a a losing trade. That's for sure. I, I really I didn't think that was very important to to pay attention to that. Another one that was really bearish on the long term is if you'll take a look here uh, in the gold on the XAU. And I will cover the wheat in just a minute, Terry. Uh, right after the break, I'll cover the wheat, and you'll notice here that we had a, a 382 retracement again. You see that we're in a downtrend. On that weekly basis from 2016, we stopped exactly at the 382, just like we did on the 618 of that previous movie. We had two ratios there. Not good, folks. This stuff's going down. At least what it looks like from the cheap seats here in Tucson, Arizona. 877-927. Is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to take a look at the wheat market. This is a long-term continuation chart. This is May wheat that we're watching here. You'll notice that on Friday, we hit the exact 78% level. That was down there at that 449 level. We're now trading at about 460. That was a hanging man candle, which usually means the selling is over, but who knows? Anyway, the risk here of being a farmer is about 10 cents. Uh, it's got a pretty good chance of turning here and up. Beans and corn uh, look a lot better, but the wheat looks the easiest as far as risk control and the fact that it hit that 78% level on the long-term weekly chart. That's the way it looks like. Last night in the wheat, while it was trading, it opened a little higher. We got up to about uh, 461. Then we pulled back to 455, which was a 382 retracement of the low on Friday. So that's going to be some type of minor support. And if we get the wheat above 470, uh, it has a chance to have a pretty good rally, and it is oversold, as you can see. We've been down, you know, a tremendous amount compared to the corn, you know, and, and the soybeans. Not the same. Not on a little bit of a uh, of a programming note, uh, we Sarah and I had a dinner with uh, lunch yesterday with some friends, and uh, we have some mutual friends, and we are <laughs> we're going to have some really interesting guests here pretty soon, folks. Probably in the next two weeks, we're going to have a couple of market wizards and a couple of household names that you folks uh, will recognize that we've known for a long time and we're putting them, getting them ready to, to do a little segment here, but I think you're going to enjoy it. It looks like about 80% chance of getting these folks, but uh, it will be a, a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, when we were having lunch, we were, we were, we were talking about one of these gentlemen, uh, Tom Dittmer, who owned uh, Refco. He was the grand or the um, stepson of Ray Friedman, R E F C O, Ray Friedman and Company, and uh, he was the one that was the honor guard at the uh, White House when. President Kennedy was there, and Tom is now retired in California, and he owns a little winery in San Inez, California, which those of you that are fans of Michael Jackson, that's where Neverland is, and uh, it's, a, it's a really beautiful place. It's a, and I happen to know that winery because I was involved with, uh, with the, the fellow that owned it many years ago, 30 years ago, Joe Carrillo. He was a little Italian guy who was a, a friend of one of my friends in, in uh, Santa Maria, California. California. And long story, you don't need to hear this. Anyway, it, Joe, Joe was, well, I have to tell you the story because it's actually quite funny. Joe uh, was over, over leveraged on the, uh, 
in the uh, uh, winery, and he had to sell it, and he was getting old, and uh, he and his wife wanted to retire to Palm Springs. And so he put a big sign out on the freeway, you know, winery for sale. And he went about a year, year and a half, two years, he couldn't sell it, didn't even have an offer. He never dropped the price. And he had about three weeks to go till the bank was going to, you know, take it all over and stuff. And uh, on one afternoon, on a Sunday afternoon, husband and wife coming from Los Angeles drove by, saw the sign, went over. And the man had just retired from TRW, that was Thompson Ramo Woodridge, and uh, big, the, the big defense contract and he was bucks up and uh, Joe wanted 7.5 million for the uh uh, for the winery, and the guy offered him 7.3, and Joe said, no. He said, I've got multiple buyers waiting, and the guy said, okay, we'll make it 7.5. So he sold it, and within just a few days of when he was going to be uh, taken out, and then he was able to move to uh, Palm Springs and uh, be able to do it. But his favorite wine there that he had that was really, uh, really popular was called Dago Red, and uh, that's an old uh, slang from, you know, really strong red-bodied wine that the Italian, you know, immigrants made, which my grandfather did that. But anyway, Joe was a great guy and uh, just a great story. Anyway, the uh, main thing that I wanted to uh, talk to you about on the second half of the show uh, was the fact that, uh, you know, we've, we've reached some really strong support here, or excuse me, resistance that we talked about uh, last week and then also in the newsletter up here at this uh, 28, uh, 20 level. We hit 28.19 and change last night. Uh, we took out the high of December by uh, two ticks. Uh, we sold off a little bit, not much going on here today with that. But the one that looks really interesting last night, folks, is we did make a higher high by quite a bit in the NASDAQ. But by doing that, if you look at this, uh, it's really doing nothing more uh, then completing that same ABCD pattern, you can see the three drive pattern. There's the Gartley you see there on the 27th of uh, February. We had that beautiful Gartley down there. We were on the show when that was happening. And so it's getting up in an area where we're at really major uh, resistance. Now, a lot of the talk is about the uh, the Chinese tariff thing that is pretty much uh, well received by everybody. It looks like the whole world is going to look at it. And the reason why we were so strong last night right off the bat was the fact that the Chinese market gapped up 1%. And, uh, you know, the, actually, the uh, Hong Kong market actually opened lower and then went up 1.5%. So it was a lot of buying in China that pushed all this stuff up to these uh, really interesting uh, resistance levels. So um, I really believe that, uh, yeah, the Wall Street Journal says it's near. Yeah, you can, well, it might be near, but it might not be what we think it is. So let's uh, let's leave the jury out on that. If we look at this uh, Hang Seng Index, I wanted to show you, because uh, we have completed a, uh, and we haven't gone above it either. We have to get above 29,000 to uh, make this a failure, and we're not anywhere near that. We're, well, we are pretty close. We're very, very close. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at the emerging market, too, because it's the same type of a pattern. Also at the 382, we've got a lot of these, you know, and we'll see if that is if that is going to be the case. But um, that, that's really what we're looking at. Someone asked about the gold. And, and, you know, folks, the gold market, all I was doing was I was looking at that long-term weekly chart in gold and that big wide range down. And the fact that you were seeing it in the XAU and you were seeing it in the gold bull index and you were seeing it, you know, in the long-term XAU weekly chart, I mean, that's really scary because that that's very bearish when it comes down that hard that first week. I mean, you know, we're only we're only uh, just a few days from the high that we made back there at 1351, and here we are, you know, we're down 60 some dollars uh, a bush a barrel. <laughs> Let's try the an ounce, you know, and that's that's not a good sign. So that's the main thing to uh, to keep uh, to keep a close eye on. So it might it might still be bullish, but I would like for them to uh, give me a little bit more uh, a little bit more data before I decide to change it. You know, and it's really hard. You know, when you're really bullish gold like I've been, and then you look at these things over the weekend, you say, "Oh my goodness, what you know? We got to be really careful in here because this could be re <laughs> this is not a, this is not the time to buy it." You know, we, we, we have a really good retracement area. We do have a had a minor ABCD there at 1292, and it only rallied $6 and failed. 
And, you know, you got to say, okay, where do I, if it goes below 1292, where's my next stop? 1283? Well, now you're talking about risking $900 in gold, and that's a little bit more than, uh, for gold, that's a little bit too much. For the S&P and stuff like that, that's nothing. But for gold, that's a, that's a lot of money. So pay attention to that. The other one that we're looking at here, of course, is you'll, you'll take a look at this long-term weekly chart in the NASDAQ. And if you'll see here, we're going to be a little bit higher. We're going to go right up where we thought we would be. That's going to be the same as the left shoulder, the right shoulder. That's going to be spot on. So that is a head and shoulders pattern. Now, whether it's going to mean anything or not, you know, I'm not sure. You know, that's right. You're right, David. Jesse Livermore is one of his favorite quotes. There is only one side to the stock market. It's not the bull side. It's not the bear side. It's just the right side so keep that in mind also remember that markets are often wrong men are off excuse me markets are seldom wrong men are often wrong we'll be right back 877-927 with bill meridian cycles research Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Okay, folks, I believe we have Bill Meridian, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria on the line. Bill, are you there? Good morning, Larry. Good morning to you. And listen, I want to thank you for your heads up on that gold because <laughs> I had been super bullish. And when I looked at your uh, posting from last month, I said, uh oh, we better be really careful. Uh, go ahead yeah. and start the program, my friend. But I did want to thank you for that because it was yeah, spot sure. on. <clears throat> okay, well, if you just go to page Two, I'm just plugging my two YouTube channels if, if you're interested in these subjects, Planetary oh, Stock Trading oh, and Mastery. Absolutely. 
geopolitical, yeah. geopolitical prediction. So let's go down to page three, which is today's perspectives. Okay. I think stocks are moving higher after a consolidation. My guess is, uh, let me see, the next turning point to have is at the end of this week. <clears throat> so I think we're currently in, in, a, in a sideways consolidation. So I, I don't think today's rally is going to go very far or will last, but I don't think it's going down either. Mm -hmm. Bonds are simultaneously, all the cycles are turning down, as we'll see. And gold, that uh, decline we're in right now should end by uh, mid-March. So if we go down to the first cycle, which is that of the weekly S&P. Okay, there you go. The first thing you notice is the last sell signal failed, which is in of itself bullish. So now you see that little V there at uh, February 21. That was the last buy signal, which is where we are right now. Now, we don't come to a sell signal until March. Now, let me just explain why that one is a bit stronger than this graph suggests. It was many years ago when I shared a taxi cab, I think 73 or 4, with George Lindsay. And we went to the Peacock Cafe, and he says, well, you know, we're the last, you know, low was 90 days and from this and 180 from that. That's when I started learning about day counts. Well, the high in this market was late September. The low was late December, and tack on three more months, and what do you have but uh, late March. So I would take that sell signal a bit more serious. So I think there's probably going to be a, 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 the sharpest pullback we've seen thus far in uh, late, um, in uh, early April. Uh, but I'm not showing it here. I should put it up next time. But the very first time I got into using the planets, I had uh, reason that if the Solar, uh, the annual cycle of the year, the rally in the spring, a decline in the autumn, a very weak October, that if that is described by the relation to, relationship of the Earth and the Sun, what about the other planets? And that's the first inquiry I made in 1986 when the software first, first became available. And I found that when Mars, in its 1.6-year cycle, when it hits late Taurus, which is where it's headed, and uh, it is in its bullish phase up until it hits zero Libra, so this 1.6 year Mars cycle is going to start having a supporting effect. So I don't even think that the uh, the April decline might be short and sharp, but it's not going to uh, uh, be very strong because it's supported by the Mars cycle, which is now in its bottoming phase. In other words, where we are in the Mars cycle in about a few weeks is exactly where we are in October in the solar cycle. It's just uh, cycles defined by planets, one by the sun, one by Mars. So let's go now to the next slide, which the, is the breadth. That's that's the advanced decline line, and you can see it's already surpassed its prior high. Now, why is the S&P lagging? Well, because the S&P is only it's uh, heavily weighted by the largest cap S&P 500 stocks. If you look at the value line index, the value line index of just 1,700 stocks weighted equally, it is stronger than the S&P. So in other words, most stocks are rallying, but they're not big names and they're not stocks with a large market cap. So I think that's the best indicator of a new high. And if you get to the next page, which is the Swiss market on page six. Yes, sir. There we go. Yeah, the SMI hit a new high last week. It's not too visible on the top of the chart, but you see I have circled it. That is just about a new high above the three previous, three previous highs. And if you look at the momentum, the blue line, look at the series of higher lows, and look at the green line, the relative strength is starting to turn up. Now, if I took Swiss market and the time scales off of that and you showed it to any technician, they'd say this looks very bullish. And this is the entire Swiss market, and it is a monthly chart. So this, this indicates much higher prices, and I think other markets are going to follow. This one just happens to be first. So okay. shall we move on to the bond market? Is the is Swiss market uh, have good volume, um, Bill? Yeah, is, sure. Uh, they have futures for it also? or I do not know if they have futures. Okay, there we go. We're on the next one, which I believe is your 10-year notes. Yeah, and the um, bond market looks weak across the board. And I had sent out to the institutions, well, you see that last, well, the end of February, one week ago, I said the declines are going to begin now because the bond cycles 
<laughs> for the U.S. bond market, the Japanese bond market, and the German bond market are all topping at the same time. So here you see the rather choppy U.S. 10-year note market. I don't think notes are going to decline that much. They're certainly not going to go lower than 118, but they may only hit 120 on the downside. For uh, The major reason there is the... Uh, <clears throat> The monthly cycle still points up. This is the weekly cycle that you're looking at. But if we go a little further, let's look at some of the numbers for March. <clears throat> In March, from March 1 to April 2, it's been down 67% of the time for an average loss of 1%. From March 18th to April 3rd, it's down 69.5% of the time for an average loss of 0.9%. And from March 18 to March 28, down 83.3% of the time for an average loss of 0.89%. These weeks, uh, week, I mean W-E-E-K, of weakness occur in March, June, and September for some odd reason in the bond market. And so now let's look at the next page. This is a blow-up of the month of March. This is the daily histogram for the 10-year note from 1982 through the present. This is each day. And what you're looking at, the blue histograms, are the expected return. In other words, if there's a if there's a 50% chance of a 1%, uh, well, it wouldn't be 1%, 50% chance of a gain of 0.5%, uh, it would come up here as plus 0.125. And as you can see, it's a very narrow range. You can see it on the left axis. Mm -hmm. But if you look at those... Do you know only 10 of those expected return days are in the plus? 20 are on the downside. You can look oh. at the right through the eighth. And then you look at that period that I mentioned. Look at 16 through uh, 23. And then down at the bottom, the second strip, is the return on 100 bucks if you just left it, if you just bought and hold in that month. <laughs> and as you can see, this is a static cycle. It occurs every year. It changes very little. Um, what we saw two slides back was the dynamic cycle extracted from the most recent numbers as of last weekend. As you could see, it points down in a choppy fashion itself. So let's go now to plain vanilla technical analysis on page 10. And there you see the daily T-bonds, and they were in a, a wedge. And as it got to the top in my institutional notes I sent out, I said, well, it's not breaking through that top, not in the face of these downturning cycles. And in fact, it may very well break through the bottom. And it closed just slightly below there. On oh, Friday, we, pay a few we, have bill. we have to We have to pay a few bills, my friend. Could you stay with us and come back sure after can. a couple of yeah. minutes? Thank you so much. Bill Meridian Cycles Research, Vienna Roster. We'll be right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying Diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, 
the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, I have a quick question for one of our sure. listeners about yep. the fact that we've got, I believe, uh, we've got a, a new moon coming up here in Mercury's uh, going retrograde uh, pretty soon is that correct i believe it is and is that does that have a good short-term uh, timing for the market or any feeling on I, that it, uh, it didn't show up <clears throat> as being strong on anything that i looked at so i haven't really taken it into account okay let's go on i think we're on the, the chart <clears throat> with the treasury notes number 11 is that correct this is the jgb the japanese government bonds yes and you'll note Look at that little, the black heavy line is the real price uh, through Friday. And the dashed line is the projection. So this is a dynamic cycle. And note how it topped right with the cycle. And fortunately, I, now notice how one confirms the other. We're going to see a third confirmation with the Bund. And it doesn't bottom until, the, until early April. Now, as you might have guessed, if you go down one more slide, Notice that the month of March has seasonally only been exceeded in weakness by the month of June. Uh, for some reason, March, June, and September are usually weak for fixed income instruments, no matter where we are on Earth. So uh, on top, you know, number 11, you've got that turning down. And on the bottom, it turns down at this time of the year, usually anyway. In other words, one confirms the other. And now we're going to go to the Bund, and look what you see with the Bund. It, again, topped exactly in line with the weekly cycle. And so we now have one, two, three major bond markets all entering the weakest part of the year, which is March, which mm -hmm. is a static cycle, all confirmed by the dynamic cycles. And if you go down one more, you'll note that this is the Bund annual cycle. Note that its weakest month is March, approximately equal in weakness to June, and a little stronger than September, but that's already down. Why that occurs, I do not know. Wow. So it, it looks like uh, the bonds are uh, going to get hit pretty hard here, but I think the U.S. notes will hold up the best, but the JGB and the Bund will uh, come down the most. And we've just started the month. So okay. now if we, if we go down one more, here's gold seasonality. And you'll note where gold is in its seasonally weakest quarter. Actually, January is pretty strong. February is okay. But March, again, is very weak. And mm -hmm. notice again, it's, now here it's March, June, and October are the weakest months in terms of expected mm -hmm. return. So now let me show you how I come up with the forecast. I know we're going into a weak month. So you turn to number 16, which okay. is, this is the weekly gold cycle. And actually, I, the gold cycle gives a sell right now, but actually I went bearish uh, a couple of weeks ago. The major reason, well, we'll see it on the next 
next page. But uh, you'll note it's down into, it's a little fuzzy, it looks like March 15th. Mm -hmm. So now let's go to the annual cycle, the monthly cycle, and note this is the reason why I went bearish a little early. First of all, gold was very overbought and had a very strong rally. And second, the monthly cycle peaked, and it peaked in late February, just before its weakest month. And you'll notice it bottoms now sometime probably in the next two weeks. So that is where that projection came from. It was number one, you're going into a weak month. Number two, the monthly cycle is peaked. Uh, number three, it was overbought. And well, that that's where the uh, projection came from. So by the middle of the month, we should be at a low. Wow. That's really, really great looking stuff because it's just doing exactly what you forecasted, both in the notes and the bonds. And, you know, you give us, you gave us that more than a month ago. You gave us those long-term uh, cycles of gold and the uh, Treasury bonds. So, boy, my hat's off to you, Bill. That, those well, are really great you. forecasts. Now, do you want to go on to the uh, uh, number uh, 18? Well, sure. This is... You know, when people ask me, you know, I was caught by surprise by the, the depth of the stock market decline in Q4. Because Q4s are usually weak, and we just had the midterm elections. This one was quite different. Uh, but the effect of the midterm election, we're seeing that now, because that 15-month period beginning with the midterms and running to the end of uh, the next year, which would be the end of this year, is usually one of the strongest. If it's not, we're in real trouble, like back in 07, 08. But I didn't think that would happen. And plus that were the year before an election, which is usually strong. Uh, but my primary reason of being st being bullish was 2020 and to 2022 looks very bearish. And in order to go down, you've got to go up first. And so that's a major reason, because I think we have a, a, a fairly uh, important year. But I think next year will look like 1980-82. I don't think it will be as bad as 2000, 2002, and certainly not as bad as 07, 08, but more like 80, 82 when Reagan came into power. Mm -hmm. And number one, it's a year ending in zero, and we know from the work of Edgar Lawrence Smith that years ending in zero have the worst stock market returns. We also know from his work that years ending in two are usually lows. So, you know, forecasting uh, a decline from a year ending in zero to a year ending in two is like forecasting rain in London and sunshine in Abu Dhabi. It usually happens, but it's reinforced. There's a Saturn-Pluto conjunction, January 12, 2020, and Saturn and Pluto are, are like a contracting type of effect. They, uh, you know, when you see this, people cut expenses, businesses cut expenses, so it means you shed unnecessary and unprofitable uh, assets. There's a solar eclipse at zero cancer. That's important because if it's at zero of the cardinal signs, and I have a YouTube video up about this, then it affects the whole world. And the last one was June. Uh, it was the June preceding the 9-11 attack. So that affected the whole world. So you've got another one of those. And the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, in that chart, the sun is at zero Capricorn, which is exactly opposite zero cancer. So whatever is happening in that year politically, uh, militarily, economically affects the whole world. And Jupiter will also be conjunct Pluto three times, which will probably be bailout and rescue attempts. And at some point, oh, the uh, if we go to the next one. You this, bet you hold I've on one second. Done a bit more work on, because this is an extremely, if you don't know, Jupiter and Saturn are conjunct every 20 years, and astrological lore is that it rules the next 20 years, but Nobody really ever says how. And also there's a little bugaboo of sometimes you have three of these. And, you know, years ago, they didn't always occur in years ending in zero. But it mm -hmm. does sort of set the economic military tone. And uh, first you'll note it's at a world point. Sun is conjunct Mercury. And the conjunction itself is at zero Aquarius. Well, that is ruled by Uranus. It's got to do with technology. It's also, I think, good for astrology. And there are a lot of planets in here, a lot of combinations. Um, you have your, you know, this gets a little hard to explain, so well, let me do the other things first. But I think it's overall, there's going to be some technology breakthroughs. They're probably going to be in the areas of artificial intelligence, quantum computing. And I think I mentioned last time, uh, Professor Victor Verpaille from San Francisco was here in Vienna. And he said he thinks that AI and 
in manufacturing are going to be so, become so uh, low cost and so automated that they're going to have to pay people a basic salary just so they'll have money to buy the goods because they're not going to have jobs. That's how uh, strongly wow. he feels about it. And I think wow. this chart may reflect that. We got to pay a few bills. Yep. Could we come back and talk about sure. the China financial crisis? Yeah. We'll be right back with Bill Meridian, folks. Stay tuned. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're talking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, you've got a chart here on the China financial crisis. Can you tell us what you're seeing here, please? Um, yeah. Uh, can, we just, can I just finish with the 2020 chart first? Oh, absolutely. Sorry, yeah. I didn't. I, yeah, okay. There we go. Well, yeah. let me just, I just want to point out some of these configurations. You have Uranus, which is the blue symbol over on the left, and uh, it is square, the asteroid Pallas, which is conjunct Jupiter and Saturn. Well, Pallas was the goddess of wisdom. It has a lot to do with uh, gadgets you use uh, to solve problems, a lot to do with uh, intellectual brilliance, problem-solving ability. And so first, the Uranus square to Jupiter-Saturn means some technology is going to be as disruptive as was the technology in, in, the, in the year 2000, Y2K and all that. And it uh, involves the Iranian planet Apollon, which tells me it will be widespread. So it would be somehow something like the, the uh, access to very high-end problem-solving tools becoming accessible to a widespread of the population, and this having a great change in our economy 
and a great change in communications, and it also has a Mars-Pluto square. I went back to 1700. There's only one other Jupiter-Saturn conjunction that had the square, and it was pretty weak, and it was not a violent year, but Mars-Pluto was fairly violent. They were square during the Battle of Gettysburg and during the bloodiest uh, battles in history. So I don't know how that one will work out. So let's now go down to China. Okay. And I'm pointing out that this is the most recent chart for China. You usually use the oldest chart you can find and the most recent one. This is October 1, 1949. And you'll note that uh, Jupiter is at 22 Capricorn 35. Jupiter will transit here 2019 to 2020. And when Pluto went over Jupiter in New York City's horoscope during the Beam administration, the city went broke. And they had to uh, they had to set up the Municipal Assistance Corporation, or Big Mac, as they called it, to administer the city until it got back on its feet. And um, if you go to the next page, the first one oh. is on March 7th, so it's coming up. Hey, Bill, thank you for joining us. We'll have you on sure. again. Great, great stuff, my friend. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Larry. Bye-bye. You bet. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!